Hello. Hi, James. Dominic here. How are you doing, Mike? How's it going? I'm just going to start the show now. I'll do the intro music and then I'll get you on, okay? Okay, brilliant. Talk to you momentarily. Cheers. Bye. Right. The Art and Spirituality Show. My guest today is casting director, writer, theatre director, producer and ex-actor, James Pearson. James, together with his wife Rosie, who is also an actor, director and producer, make up award-nominated casting house Pearson Casting and Pearson Theatre Productions. For the last 26 weeks, James and Rosie have put together the Creative Collective Initiative, offering free industry classes from over 200 practitioners via their YouTube channel. This is the Art and Spirituality Show. Let's talk art. Online, on the iOS and Android, on your mobile phones, great speakers conversation around the globe. This is Relax Radio. The Art and Spirituality Show. Well, we're joined today via phone by Mr. James Pearson. James, you're on air with us. Hello, how are you doing? Hey, James. Thanks a million for joining us today. Oh, you're welcome. That was, a, that was an intro. I enjoyed that. I should, I should carry you around with me and, and just, you know, <laughs> present me every, everywhere I go. I love that. <laughs> yeah. It's nice <laughs> to get this kind of summary of your life just in a, a, a kind of 45 second segment, isn't it? <laughs> Brilliant. I love it. Yeah, but I mean, congratulations on the uh, Collective Creative Initiative. Thank you. Yeah, it, it was uh, a really amazing experience um, for us, you know, um, uh, delivering it and um, and then also for the response that it had and uh, from people within the industry. And yeah, it was, it was a really special thing for us um, to, to uh, have done for ourselves in, in terms of like, you know, um, just being able to being able to uh, to sort of deliver it really we 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 sort of yeah we sort of wake up each day going it what, must... what we're doing today it's like incredible <laughs> but uh, yeah it was a really it was it was it was um yeah it, we it, we felt privileged to be able to deliver it and we we all, we have to thank Innovate UK um for basically giving us the grant to to be able to do it which is uh, we mustn't forget the people that are financially behind it as well so yeah no absolutely so much absolutely innovate uk i mean what a what a fantastic grant i know that you you put uh forty five thousand pounds into the industry over forty five thousand pounds into the industry yeah. through this uh through this scheme right so that was i mean that's, yeah that's an amazing achievement in of itself i mean yeah yeah absolutely yeah absolutely and it's um you know without without these without these schemes out there to 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 help us um, you know, it it definitely wouldn't have it wouldn't have happened. <laughs> and how did how did it come about? Because I know obviously the the lockdown started kind of around March time. Had you guys thought about doing something like this previously? Because I know that you were involved in uh, the open houses through Spotlight. Yeah, so we we've always um, we've always been very active in doing sessions, mentoring sessions like. Uh, in terms of casting we've done lots of you know free mentoring sessions like that um yeah. and we do a lot i've done teach other at different colleges <coughs> excuse me throughout the country and so on so we've always been kind of um 
uh, we've always had kind of an, a, a want to help. Um, and we've always wanted, when we started uh, as an entertainment group, which under that comes casting and, and the theatre productions, we always... know that people um are wanting this because when we saw everyone get you know start doing things for free we we did at the same time think this you know this isn't sustainable um as we continue in you know those yeah. wonderful practitioners are going to need to earn money um but the further we go into lockdown the less money people are going to have and that's really we were like if we could create something where 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 the practitioner can be paid and the um but but the performer can still get a free class. Yeah, that's really that would be amazing, and um, and that's what we were trying to work out how how could that how could that work? And then a friend uh, who works in business, um, uh, intellectual property and stuff, sent us this link and said maybe this guys can help you because we'd mentioned ideas to her, and maybe this is this scheme which was Innovate UK could could be something you could look at and. And so that's that's where it all kind of came together, and yeah, and then and then you kind of go on this ride, and and yeah, you start to see people on social media chatting to each other that were on a on a talk, and and yeah, that whole sense of community and people feeling like, um, you know, so many people were alone in 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 Big flats, time. in rooms even, yeah, and feeling very uh, disconnected from the world as we all were. Yeah, um, Rosie and I. We, felt the same you know our entire business went to nothing in 24 hours yeah um in march you know as 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 everyone did um and so uh we we our mental health side of it was by doing this really helped us as well so so it was that thing i think that people suddenly didn't feel so isolated um and it's really interesting since we finished um the cci the the house is so quiet now <laughs> because <laughs> we would always have even if we weren't uh, one of the presenters we always had it on in the background making make, you know uh, dealing with tech issues or whatever yeah, was yeah. happening if things were not um, uh, and so but now that yeah the house is so quiet because we haven't got we haven't got people going ah five six seven eight in the background or <laughs> talking about talking about Ibsen and you know Shakespeare and it's, yeah it's very strange but I think that sense of community was was. It was a huge, yeah, it was, it was a huge achievement. Yeah, and what I really liked as well about um was the assortment of, of different types of classes that you guys had on there. You know, it wasn't just, you know, it wasn't just acting classes. You also had dance classes on there. You also had people consulting about, you know, accountancy. You also had people who, like, I mean, for example, your 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 patron that you got, your patrons that you got involved. I mean, having yeah. someone like Arlene Phillips involved must have just been amazing. It was so. Just to give you a bit of backstory of where we came from. So when when our friends sent the uh, that the link, they're called competitions. So Innovate UK uh, have competitions every year okay. uh, throughout the year for different areas of business. Um, and so we had, I think, it was five days to get the business plan in to make the deadline. Wow. Uh, and part of the delivery of it was it had to be up and running on the first of June. Yeah. And then. Um, 
and we would know 1st of May. Well, they had um, as many entries that they have in an entire year they had for this one competition oh my um, God. because it was areas of industry that had specifically been uh, hit by COVID. So that was the that was the the, the line that you had to follow. So yeah. I think they had eight eight over eight thousand people submit business plans. So it got delayed. So but uh, so when we found out that we we had we were one of the winners um, to receive the grant, we then had I think it was seven to or nine days to then build the website, get the <laughs> practitioners on, get it all together. So we had to, what you see in terms of what, when you switch on, yeah. that all took nine days. Wow. Uh, to wow. Do. It, it was nuts. And part of that was like, right, we'd worked with the, uh, the wonderful Ireland before, and we called her up, and she immediately said yes. And then um, Toby and Lucy, obviously hit the writers of six, they yeah. like, yes, we'd, we'd love to help. And then we were like, we'd, let's just get two weeks up. Let's just get two weeks of classes up yeah, yeah. and then go from there. And because we'd pledged like, to try and deliver 30 hours a week, I don't know <laughs> why we thought that. Like, oh, good <laughs> Lord. You know, on paper, you kind of go, yeah, that's, that's okay. It is so much work um, to do that. And, and, but anyway, we, we were like, okay. Um, so we, we worked really hard to get the first two weeks uh, up. So we contacted people that we knew to start with, but we, then we can't, we hit like Instagram and Twitter and to people we didn't know, but we just watched their classes. Yeah. Um, because what we wanted was we didn't part of, um, <coughs> part of the delivery for us was that every single performer, no matter what age, no matter what area of the industry they may be in. And uh, as we know, there were lots of different areas within, within, I'm an actor. There are so many different fields that cover I'm an actor or Absolutely. I'm a dancer. Or, Absolutely. And, and, and so we really wanted to try and create as diverse a program as we possibly could. Um, and so we went on to it and we found people who just did amazing classes like, hi, um, uh, Monica Gaga was one, uh, this incredible improv class. We're like, come and please come. And she's like, oh, okay, amazing. Um, and so we then picked it up from there and then, once we'd got it all up and running the first two weeks, we then sort of were able to catch up on ourselves. And and our rule really was as long as the person was qualified to deliver um, whatever whatever class they wanted to deliver, yeah. um, and uh, they had you know a good reputation of that delivery, we were literally open to anything and everyone. And so yeah, so we went from acrobatics to juggling to Shakespeare to working text, audition tech, candid Q and A, you know, you yeah, know everything. Yeah. Tax advice, which we thought was a, a really big one. Tax advice, big time. Um, you know, approach. So yeah, so it just kind of grew from there, and and um, we obviously spent a lot of time in the first couple of months approaching people, um, and then after it kind of got out, people then sort of approached us and. And we're like, I, I do this tech, um, you know, music tech class or how to, yeah. how to record. Okay, cool. <laughs> you know, like, why not? <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't care. You know, at the end of the day, it's, it's, if, if a couple of people get, you know, feel rewarded from it and, yeah. and learn something, then nailed it. You know, it was never about delivering to millions of people, although yeah. we did end up, uh, you know, um,
sort of getting up and wandering through the day to actually yeah. have structure I think that was one of the big things that helped and it, it's yeah it was a great great lesson for us to go oh okay that's really interesting you know really interesting yeah yeah absolutely mental health 101 get a structure get yeah. a routine right yeah absolutely absolutely 100 hey listen folks we're talking to uh, james pearson here today uh, one half of pearson casting and also one half of uh, the collective creative initiative which just finished running 26 weeks of free industry classes via their youtube channel uh, we're going to take a short break we'll be right back after these messages please join us for more art and spirituality please join us then relax ready The radio advertisement is four times more powerful than any other media. Relax Radio the advertise Kutta Chan Talama the Kaji Jugajukurun on O two O seven four seven four nine two nine two. Amada Shati advertise Kurun from ninety nine pounds a month. Increase your business by advertising on Relax Radio. It has been too long. No one has taken the initiative to know who you are and what you do. Well, Relax proudly presents Relax Media to unite and expose all media-related personalities under one umbrella. If you are an artist or maybe you're looking for one, look no further. Log on to www.relaxmedia.com dot com r e l a k s media dot com in return you get a free web page and exposure to wider fan appreciation and contacts also optional personal manager don't delay relax ready The Art and Spirituality Show. Welcome back. We're joined today via phone by James Pearson. James, you're back on air with us. Hello. Thank you very much. Welcome back. Welcome back. Yeah, I mean, I, I really want to go back in time a little bit because, um, yeah, you know, I know that yourself and Rosie, you, you guys have been around in the business for, for such a long time. Uh, I don't want to make you sound too old here. Long time. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, where am I going with this? Where am I going with this? No, and uh, what I meant to say was, um, yeah, of course, you're 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 both you're both uh, ex actors. I don't know if Rosie's still acting, but I know that you you specified that you're an ex actor. Yeah, we both we both are. We both um, performers for uh, I was performing for about nineteen years, I guess 19, wow. 18 wow. and a half, nineteen years, and Rosie for about uh, how long? 12, 14 years. Um, yeah, so. Um, yeah, prior to getting into casting, you know, we kind of we acted, we performed. Or we're both singers, so we've done uh, singing contracts, singing gigs as yeah. well. And and then um, yeah, both of us uh, like directed plays. I wrote a few um, play, one act plays that that I did way back, you know, um, when I was yeah. an actor, and you know that whole thing just get it on. And then I directed a few things as well, which I loved. I loved to. Uh, Love directing, really enjoyed that. Um, so yeah, so so yeah, twenty five years for me. Um, <laughs> it's a long twenty five years in the industry. It's quite quite uh, quite a good, good chunk of time. Mark. Good chunk of time. Yeah. I, I know that you know you graduated from uh, from musical theatre um, university. 
and I know yeah. that you went into you were you were one of the first to actually get employment from your from your graduate graduating year, right? I was, yeah, yeah. So um, I went to a place called London School of Musical Theatre, and I did the very first year of the course. Um, wow, wow! Uh, and it's now it's its twenty fifth anniversary. Um, and yeah, and so uh, me along with my friend Mark Lawson, we got cast in a uh, musical called Damn Yankees. Um, yeah which was on at the Bridewell Theatre. Um, fantastic experience. And so we left college slightly early to start rehearsals for that. And then from that, I got my agent. And then um, by the May next year, so that's, um, yeah, I, I managed to get into the West End, which was, which was amazing. So, um, yeah, it was so a, a really, really, yeah, it was an incredible, incredible start. And at, yeah, what, at what point, because I know that you, you, you spent a good number of years, and, and, you, and Rosie as well, you spent a good number of years working on the cruise ships, and um, that was yeah. something that, um, that you kind of, kind of paved your way for your acting, and also, I guess, in your casting as well, right? Yeah, so um, it, I was uh, in London, and I was doing a show uh, up at the Gatehouse at the time, yeah. and uh, a friend in the cast was like, oh, have you ever gone away, have you ever done cruises? And I said, no, actually, I was often when I first graduated and then I, I got other work I got into to West End and, and I said it's always interested me but I don't know and he was he, he, he was like oh you would love it honestly you just got you seem like you've got completely the right temperament I think you'd really enjoy it and and a big thing for me was being an actor was was trying to travel as as much as I could with my with my craft you know and yeah travel around the world if I could and I, I managed to work from Europe and stuff because I just felt as an actor you know it, it, you have that opportunity um it's not for me it wasn't just about being in the UK and I was like oh that's interesting and then I sort of thought about it and I, yeah, I was like at a point oh you know what? I could I could move out of London for a bit and go away and see a bit of the world that sounds pretty good so sent to my agent like to audition and I did for uh, Belinda King Productions uh, and uh, they had productions on the the Queen shit so Queen Mary Queen Elizabeth um, Q2 um, so yeah so I auditioned and I, I got it and went away on the QM2 and absolutely fell in love with with that and the travel and my first contract I went to New York like I don't know like 20 times and Ran, uh, all the way up to Canada and wow. to Europe, and that was incredible. And you've been paid to do it, and and the people you met, and and then you know I started working with uh, Argentine tango specialists and Ukrainian um, dancers and Russian dancers who travelled, uh, who trained at the Bolshoi folk in 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 Russia and wow. um, things like that. And you're just like the talent, and and then I. I got contracted to, to do a world cruise, which was amazing. Yeah. And in the rehearsals, I met Rosie, who was working for the same company, but doing a different contract. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, and that was it. And and I ended up doing 13 contracts across Cunard, um, Princess, p Australia, uh, and Norwegian Cruise Line. And it was Norwegian Cruise Line um, where we were production singers for quite a bit. Uh, and... And yeah, we we were we became very passionate about the cruise industry. I, I hated that it um, had like a, a bad rap, you know. People yeah. look down on it in our industry, and I'm very outspoken about, uh, as you might have heard before, but I'm very outspoken about how we create a hierarchy within our industry. Oh no! Um, that all that all that does is creates mental health, and it and and you know I. I truly believe that the greatest mental health um, uh, help that any performer can have is to be working and and be be working in something they love. And that is my also my analogy for success. Whenever anyone asks me what success, I say, if yeah. you get up in the morning and you're doing something and you're happy by the end of the day, then you're, you're successful. And it doesn't nice. matter if it is in the West End, on t um, in a film, in TV, uh, working in a holiday park, on a cruise ship, uh, singing yeah. in a bar. It doesn't matter. And and I hate that we look at others and put them down because, you know, they are not wherever it, it may be. Um, and, you know, I worked in West End. I had a lo lovely time. I loved every minute of it. But yeah. um, 
But I worked with people that hated it, absolutely hated it. Sure. And then they went away and did like a, a small, you know, tour, a TIE tour, and they loved it, and they were happy as Larry, you know, performing in front of children every day. So there's, I just don't understand it. And so we became very passionate about that, and we were thinking of coming home. You know, we'd been away a long time um, and thought about working. I, I, I'd wanted to uh, work in casting. It was something that I was passionate about. Rosie was really, uh, like, I, I'd love to cast, you know, for cruise ships. It's something. So we were like, why don't we go home and, and see if we can cast? within the cruise industry specifically and wow. make that our thing, make that our uh, USP and, and, um, and Norwegian cruise line gave us our first opportunity and we cast a uh, legally book for them. Oh, brilliant. Um, and yeah. And that's where it all went from. It's just started there. And, and yeah. And, and we feel very passionate about every ounce of work that we do. Yeah. Um, we do it because we're passionate about, about, that work and i honestly don't i don't you know i i it, it's all it's all as important as as each other and because um because people have i see performers having a great life in 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 the areas that we cast and and that's really what it's about I'm not happy every day of course it's not you know not, i'm not talking about you know you don't have bad days but I, I feel very much that we shouldn't be putting down other areas of the industry. Um, if people are happy working in that area, they're, they're up to success. I agree. I agree 100%. Well said, well said. By the way, listeners, <laughs> um, if you want to um, ask James any questions today, you can give a, a phone in. You can also give a, a text message or a WhatsApp in. We're on 078 473. If you have any questions for James uh, or myself, but probably for James, uh, that's totally fine. You can give a call in, and uh, we did actually uh, receive we did actually receive a a, a question in, uh, which I I will a, I will answer in a moment. But um, I wanted to just ask you really quickly: Did you set up? Did you guys set up um uh, Pearson Theatre Productions at the same time as he set up Pearson Casting? Yeah. So actually, Pearson Theatre came first. Um, okay. Rosie Rosie worked. Um, Rosie wrote. Uh, co-wrote but rosie wrote the most of it yeah uh, wrote uh, a christmas show uh, a production show so when i say production show or when you go on a ship you have musicals on ships but then the other shows they're called production shows so there's not like a necessarily a story to it right um, there might be a theme for example it could be a, a 70s disco show or an uh, aerial okay. show or something like that yeah uh, <clears throat> and rosie is obsessed with christmas and wrote um this very beautiful show um and we were on uh, a ship but in america so it's called the holiday season yeah. not christmas you, know, yeah. you say happy holidays rather than christmas um uh because obviously within that is hanukkah and so on um of course. Yeah. so and we called it a holiday wish and we we presented the idea whilst we were singers on norwegian cruise line of doing this show and we wanted to do it just as like a matinee for a sea day and um because there's no it on cruise ships that there, there certainly wasn't until ours there might be now but um you always just kind of got together the week before christmas and people were like i'll sing this song i'll sing this and it was kind of a bit kind of um not thrown together they're always really great but we were like why does no one write something that that can just be on the fleet it makes no sense yeah um so that's what we did and um and we presented it to norwegian and they loved it and um so they put it on in the evening instead of one of their other shows and it got amazing reviews and it went down really really well Brilliant. and they put it on another one of their ships and and so that was our you know our first experience so it was actually the theater pearson theater uh, production started started with that um and when was that james so that was about a year before casting right started, i guess yeah i'm terrible with with you, you can, <laughs> yeah, fair honestly enough. you could have yeah about a year before yeah so um okay go with that sure <laughs> sure sure uh but about a year before and so yeah we, we did that and it was it was really again amazing experience and we involved every department pretty much it was in entertainment on the ship and it was just uh yeah it was a it was a really really wonderful wonderful experience and um yeah so that's that's kind of where that started 
That's brilliant. That's brilliant. That's so interesting. I, we have received a question uh, from uh, Eden Alexander. She's actually a she's an Israeli actress based in London, and she says that she's a theatre actor, but she was thinking about making the the crossover into screen acting, and she's wondering uh-huh. if you have any tips. So obviously, you need a a, a show reel. Um, it's you know they've got to within screen. Um, these days, they've got to be able to see you do something. And the only way they can see you do something is what you look like on screen. So it's absolutely imperative that you get a show reel. Yep. Um, there are different ways to get a show reel. One is there are lots of amazing, I, I don't know the names of them all, but there are amazing people out there that will make you a show reel. So they might even write you a bit of script. Yeah. Uh, for the scene, so you might go, oh, I want like an emotional scene where an argument or something, and they'll write that for you, or they'll, you know, there may be something from a from a uh, film that they could use and things, and they film it, and it's really nice, <laughs> and you you can involve other actors and, and stuff like that, so that's really cool. Um, and then you really get what you want, and it's really focused on you. Um, when I was an actor, we didn't have digital cameras so it was you know incredibly expensive to to get something like that made i mean yeah. you just no one did no one did that so what i used to do is go to film schools in london uh and take your cv and just whack it up on the board and put you know actor available for for any student film um yeah and so you know i did a couple of student films um they were all white, um, but <laughs> the key is I I did get some footage out of them. Exactly. Um, yeah. And, and and you know so that was really good. Um, Facebook is really great for finding. Um, we were based in Liverpool <laughs> for a long time, and in Liverpool there's the Liverpool Film um, like community, uh, and it's really active. It's really really active, and people are you know um, new di- film directors who have got shows, they're always looking for actors. You may not be paid, um, but the way to think of it is I can either pay to get to get someone to make me a short film, yeah, or I can get someone to, you know, they'll pay expenses kind of thing. Because when people are starting out uh, making film, you know, no one, there's never any money and no one ever gets paid in doing short films, really. I mean, they do, they do exist, but, sure. but it, realistically... But you're not going to spend a lot of time. It's not going to be, you're not going to be working on it for weeks. Well, you certainly shouldn't be working on it for weeks and weeks, but you might do a couple of days. It's a great way to experience what it's like to be on the set and so on and so forth. So, um, but whichever way you go about it, to cross over into screen, you've got to have something uh, to show the, the screen casting director that they can see on screen. Um, and, and that's it. Make sure in your show reel though that monologues are not show reel, self tapes are not show reel. So if you are on backstage.com, spotlight.com, Mandy, any of these sites where you get um, where you have your profile, make sure that you have your show reel, which is you acting with somebody else. Um, it doesn't need to be very long either. It, you know, never over three minutes, but it doesn't need to be a very long. If you've got like a minute of material great don't worry about it you know yeah um but then separately if you've done a monologue that should be a separate clip and if you really a big trend at the moment is putting up self-tapes um which i don't necessarily think do you that much good because i always get distracted by by mum reading in sure. your, you, have a lull, <laughs> you know and it's like and you do you get you get kind of like drawn away from it yeah um so i never i never think that's a good idea to put self-tapes up and also with self tapes, be very careful because you might be putting something up that you've actually not realised, but you've agreed that is very um, that's private. Exactly. Um, you know, for the film company. So be be careful with with self tapes. Um, yeah, and that's that's it. Just make sure the other actor is good, and make sure the sound and editing is good. So when I say the sound is good, that you sound even to the other person so it's not like oh hi how are you doing yeah i'm very good oh good and then there's just this vast difference of sound you yeah. know yeah. um they're, they're really the things and that the editing is punchy and, and is on you we get a lot of show reels sent where they, they the actor starts off and then it goes to the other actor 
and then it stays on that other actor for like you know 15 20 seconds yeah and we're not seeing we're not seeing you or watching this other actor um and i'm sure they'll be very thankful for you promoting them but <laughs> try and work out how to edit it so that it so that it stays on you as much as possible um yeah there we go Fantastic, fantastic. Thank you so much for that, James. Top tips there from James Pearson. I hope that answers your question. Uh, Eden Alexander, uh, thank you for that question. We're going to take a short break, folks. We'll be right back after these messages when we'll be talking to James more about the Creative Collective Initiative and also about some upcoming productions that uh, that he's, he is involved in that are going to be on in this very month streaming so we'll be right back after these messages please join us then relax radio The radio advertisement is four times more powerful than any other media. Relax Radio the jodi advertise korte chan tale amaderke aje jogajog korun on 02074749292. Amader sathe advertise korun from 99 pounds a month. Increase your business by advertising on Relax Radio. It has been too long. No one has taken the initiative to know who you are and what you do. Well, Relax proudly presents Relax Media to unite and expose all media related personalities under one umbrella. If you are an artist or maybe you're looking for one, look no further. Log on to www.relaxmedia.com. R E L A K S media.com. In return, you get a free web page and exposure to wider fan appreciation and contacts also optional personal manager don't delay relax ready The Art and Spirituality Show. Welcome back. And so exciting. We're talking with James Pearson today. He's joining us via telephone. James, you're back on air with us. Hello. James, thank you so much for that extensive and detailed uh, answer to that last question that we had. It was a very... I'm glad that you say extensive and detailed. Most of the time, Rosie just says I waffle, so uh, (laughs) that's nice. That's good. I think you thought you really covered all your bases with it, you know? It was uh, yeah, it was really, really, really detailed. I thought we did actually we received we received like three or four questions just in the break there, but um, I'll get to them in a moment. I haven't, I'm not ignoring you. I will get to your questions. They're all from one actor, and I will get to them in a moment. But I want to ask you because I know that you you guys have a, a production coming up uh, later this month at the Southwark Playhouse, right? We do. Yes, absolutely. And uh, this is a this is a project that you guys co-produced. Yeah, uh, yeah, we co-produced. So um, it's it's kind. This is this is kind of the the sort of the great bits about our industry. I think um, we were we had uh, a casting meeting. So the week before sort of COVID hit this country, uh, we were on Broadway. We went to watch Six, the musical, open on Broadway, and of course that was the day Broadway shut. It shut down. Um, yeah. And so we flew home early. But the week before, we had a casting meeting with writer Tim Gilvin uh, and director Grace Taylor, who is also one of the associates on Six. Yeah. Congratulations on had... Six, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's amazing that they've they've worked so relentlessly hard. 
um, to get that show back open. So uh, fingers crossed we can in Manchester soon as well. So um, fingers crossed, system, fingers crossed so, for that. Absolutely. Um, so <clears throat> yeah, so we were asked if we would cast um, this show called Stay Awake Jake um, that Tim had written and it won uh, some awards, been done at the vaults. And um, the idea was to do a, a concert of it um, to uh, to then try and get uh, producers interested and so on. So we were like, it's a one-man show. Um, we're like, absolutely. So we, uh, we then went away and then the world shut. Um, and then it was like, let's do a bedroom recording of it. We're like, fab, let's do that. Um, yeah. So we've got a wonderful actor involved. Uh, his name is uh, Ahmed Hamad. Yeah. And if you've watched Rent Online, which we cast, uh, Ahmed is in, he plays Benny in Rent, um, which is from, which is currently, it was on the Hope Mill Theatre and they're streaming it at, at the moment. Uh, it's incredible what they've done as well. I mean, just, you know, the, 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 what some of these um, production companies have gone through and the way they've, their Adapted. tenacity and the way they've come out is just, I mean, it's just wonderful. Um, and so, yeah, so we got Ahmed involved. And then I, I chatted to a few uh, people I knew, and it sort of it then went to a, we ended up doing an, a full um, studio recording of it. And we got involved, the incredible Nick Pinchbeck, who has uh, a studios, um, and he got Matthew Malone involved, who had worked on Boy in the Dress. Uh, to do arrangements and wow. uh, Steve McGill came in and we produced this album, which is really fantastic. Um, and then the Southwark, um, uh, we were presented with the, the option to do um, a smaller version of, of what we were doing album wise um, at the Southwark. They're doing these series of live streams um, and they're running now. So last weekend, Adam Linton had uh, one of his productions on and they go this weekend and yeah. then it's us on the 18th and 19th of December. Um, so it's really uh, mental because it's live. So it is not <laughs> pre-recorded. It is live streamed <laughs> on the uh, Friday the 18th and Saturday the 19th. The matinee on the 19th is captioned as well, so uh, which is which is great. And yeah, and so it will be um, a kind of live lounge feel to it. So it will be... Um, we have the wonderful uh, Tamara uh, Saranga, who's our musical director, and yeah. she'll be on piano, and then uh, cellist, and then Ahmed. And so that's what we're doing, and it's really exciting, and we're co-producing that with Damien Tracy and in association with s and Theatre Productions. And, yeah, tickets are £10. Um, they go up next week. Uh, so if you want to book book now, £10. Um, support theatre. And, definitely, um, definitely. Those at, yeah, go to the Southwark website um, and look for Stay Awake Jake. And, yeah, so it's really, it's really exciting. And it kind of, we were like, right, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> it just kind of came full around. And, and yeah, um, it's been a, an incredible experience to, to produce something. And even though it's just doing three performances, it's still, you know, you do as much work as if it was going on for six months, you know. And uh, so, yeah, but we're very proud of it. It's a wonderful piece that Tim's written. Um, it's a beautiful story. Um, and Ahmed is a true star. Um, so, yeah, please come and support us. Go and buy lots of tickets. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure, for sure. And we, I know that Harry, our, our station tech, has been putting up, um, you know, graphics while we've been talking here. So, you know, because as you know, we're we're streaming live on uh, on Facebook and YouTube and things like that as well. Yeah. So I think we're going out on Twitter as well. So yeah, well, for Thank sure, you. we're going to have all of the uh, all of the different links about everything that's coming up uh, for yourselves. Thank you. We'll have those on, you know, for sure, for sure. Um, uh, I, I will I will get to the questions that we asked. I, I think I'm going to put the questions towards the end of our show because I want to ask you about another project that you have coming up. And this is a project that you guys are actually producing. And I know that it, it's, I'm, well, I, I hope I have my information right. I think it's going to be, you're going to be, it's going to be coming out maybe next year. And this is uh, The Withering. Yes. So um, another, so this actually came out of, um, part of kind of the mentoring uh, things that we do. Yeah. So when when we're in Liverpool, we um, so as you mentioned briefly, um, we brought uh, spotlights. Wonderful spotlight came to Liverpool. And we did 
a series of open houses. So actually a bit like CCI, yeah. but um, which is why you touched on it. But yeah, so free lectures and things like one-to-ones and, and whatnot. And it was great. And we've done that in Liverpool and Manchester for like the last four years. Sadly, it didn't happen this year obviously. For obvious reasons, and you, um, and you guys but, were you guys were sorry to interrupt you, but you guys were the first the first people to do that in the northwest, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah. Again, that came about just. I mean, this is what's so wonderful about our industry and our community, and that 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 wanting that sort of drive and want to help um, as much as the whole commercial side of our industry. There really is an underlying want to help. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and um, I had met Ben Seal at the Spotlight Prize, which is where um, you know young actors, graduating actors, come and do monologues or songs, and in in front of industry. Yeah, and I'd mentioned, you know, listen, I know you go to Edinburgh and you do these in London, but I think the Northwest would really appreciate having Spotlight come and and do something. And he was in, all over it, and he was absolutely, and so. That's where that came about. So we brought that um, up to uh, up to Liverpool, and then we did one year, two years in Manchester. I can't remember. Um, but again, like in Liverpool, the the Empire Theatre gave us t- space for for free to do it. Amazing. And, uh, the Royal Court Theatre um, again gave space for free, and just people wanted it to to. They just thought they saw real value in in actors being able to just come along and and see these sessions and meet people and but yeah. part of that was about uh we we uh again wonderfully spotlight provided like evening kind of socials uh and it and allowed actors um to meet each other in their own cities and maybe they didn't Amazing. they hadn't but well, we had people fly over from norway and sweden to it. it was ridiculous yeah absolutely incredible That's um mad. so um and at one of these i met uh matthew uh Thornton field and he said, I've got this play. Would you be interested in reading it? And so over about an 18 month period, um, I kind of met with him and sort of worked on bits. And um, I said, it's really great. It's a ghost story. And I said, this is really, really great. Um, and then it just, it felt like the right opportunity because of everything locked down. And I, and I said to him, listen, um, why don't we, <coughs> excuse me, why don't we do um, a read through? I think, What's really important before we go to workshop stage is for you to hear it. Um, so let's do that. And he was right, absolutely. So um, we introduced him to a wonderful director who we met through the CCI, through Collective Creative Initiative, yeah. uh, Nick Bagnall. And so Nick loved it as well. He thought it was fantastic. Brilliant. And so we got a reading, a, a socially distanced reading together in Liverpool and and they heard it and and you know that's when you hear and and the play works a few little tweaks but actually not as much as as um as actually matthew thought he was like i'm sure we're gonna have to do loads of work and cut but he'd done he'd done a lot of work prior to that and yeah and there we go so now we're looking at the workshop um uh of that which we're hoping to do next april so just all about fundraising now and trying to get the monies for that and um matthew did a a um you know fundraising online fundraising and, and well, i can't remember it was 1500 and i think we've surpassed that which is awesome so That's we're amazing. well on our way and then now it's just like you know begging the arts council and things like that so, so we'll see <laughs> but hopefully we'll do a workshop uh, of that and again we're very much connected so we've got a whole shadowing program going um as part of it so budding directors or casting directors or writers that will have people shadow yeah. us through our process and and uh we're going to do a series of workshops with community outreach and stuff as well to to really get people involved so so yeah so that's you know fingers crossed that will go all ahead for for next april and then we'll see where we go from there and and the idea would be then to take it on to to either a tour or, or a venue and what we would just have to see it's a slow process all of this you know it takes a long time to a lot of time a lot of money um to to get these things um you know out there so if we could be looking at 2022 for for it to be in full production that would be very exciting so so we'll watch this space but go follow um uh I think it's withering underscore the. Um, there's like a, a scary picture on Twitter. Follow us um, and follow uh, Stay Rate Jake as well. S A J 
um, music, the musical, uh, if you type that into Twitter, go and get the follow. It's all about the follows and you can keep it is up all about the, the follows. It is all about the yeah. follows. That's it's, great, James. I mean, congratulations. That's, you know, and I have to say, you know, just, I think I'm speaking for, I'm speaking for the industry here, you know, but it's nice to, um, it's so nice. The vibrations that you guys, the good vibes that you guys put out when you went about setting up the collective creative initiative. And I, I think it goes back further. I mean, you guys only got on my radar, you know, back in March. But then again, I was, you know, I, I'm, I'm, new, in the, I'm new in London, so I, you know, wouldn't have known about you before, you know. But uh, uh-huh. it seems to me that, you know, you guys have been uh, have been spreading spreading good vibes for a number of years. And um, I wanted to ask you if you considered yourself spiritual. Yeah, it's always an interesting question, I suppose. Um, I yeah, it's something that I've I've thought about for well forever, really. You know, yeah. Um, and you know, um, you know, religion, spirituality, and so on and so forth. I, 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 yeah, and I think that you know, I'm I'm not certainly not a religious person. I sure. don't. Um, believe I don't believe in God. I, yeah. I'm I'm definitely atheist. Sure. Um, I don't I don't believe in God, and I'm happy to say that to to anyone. Um, yeah. Always ready to be proven wrong. Um, but um, spirituality. I mean, for me, there's. I think I think the thing for me is I don't need there to be somewhere else to go to. Yeah. Um, and I live very much that everything I do here today now. Um, is about creating good vibes and good juju yeah. for now yeah. and for my existence today, not for something that might happen if I pass. Absolutely. So that is that is kind of like, um, you know, I, I think that, um, you know, is there something else? Um, there could be. Uh, you know, what, 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 what is that? I have no idea. Um, but I, I just, I live in a very, I guess in a very much a, I, I, things I see, that's what I, they're real. And so I live in that world that, um, the sun comes up and the rain makes us wet and, you know, earth is hard when it's dry. And so I guess kind of like, you know, right back to sort of, you know, uh, that that whole thing of I that that that's what exists and people exist yeah um and I know that because I can put my hand out and put put it on someone's shoulder and say how are you um and that's really how I how I live and I live very much that way and I I just you know I know I, I and I know everyone does but sometimes we don't admit to this yeah I I know that uh if i punch someone in the face yeah as an analogy sure. they might punch me back yes um and i and it's not a surprise when they do and and i very much live that i know that every mistake has been mine um and i know that every success is mine as well and yeah. that's um as an actor i never read the, i never read reviews in terms of like um i ne- i like Everyone loves reviews, and they are really important for the success of shows. Absolutely, um, and I love it when people watch shows that we've cast or that I've been in. And as an actor, I got I got some lovely reviews. But at the same time, I don't can't be defined by that. Yeah. Um, because it it alters you, um, and so I I literally know if 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 something that has happened in the past that we was didn't go too well it was probably my fault not not all of it not like like a producer going under or like we we work for producers that conned us and things like that but they conned everyone yeah. i'm not talking about that sure um but i what i'm talking about is like on a sort of day-to-day basis um very much that you know if my actions will create a reaction and so uh well, so, I, I have to say, I have to say, just to just to interject for a second there, I have to say, just just going back to my original question of if you're if if you consider yourself spiritual, you know, I think you know all of the all of your actions in terms of like you know all of the mentoring programs that yourself and Rosie have done, you know, through piercing casting, and now of course with the collective creative initiative, to me that's you know that's 
created so much good vibes and so much good energy out into the world. And I mean, that's how I see spirituality personally. Spirituality is in the present moment, what you're doing now, what type yeah. of, what type of, what type of energy are you putting out to the world? What, how are you showing up and what are your well, actions, it's, it's, you know? It's the human spirit or, or, yeah. or, or people would call it soul, or, you know, rather than, you know, focusing on, you know, physical things. Yeah. That's not to say, I, I, you know, that I don't like, you know, a, a nice watch or, you know, you know, comfortable pair of trainers and sure. things like that, you know, but, but that's, that is kind of the way I, I live and, 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 and I look back at on, on, on my life and, and look at things that were, um, that, that it, it also comes down to things like, um, I can never remember who said this. It's either Gary player or Arnold Palmer. I must look up. Okay. Um, but, but, um, he was talking about luck and, uh, it was somebody was interviewing him and they, and they were like, Oh, you, you were so lucky out there today. And his reply was, yes, it's interesting that the, the, the more I practice, the luckier I become. <laughs> and, and it's yeah. so true. Yeah. His job is to hit a ball into a hole as, with as fewer shots as possible. Now, the only way to master that is to keep practicing. And, you know, that's it, really. It, it, it's not, it's not when, 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 when a golfer hits a ball and it goes in the hole, that's not a fluke. That's what he's trying to do. Exactly. And so it, it's very kind of, yeah. And, and so I think that, you know, like there's always that thing of, oh, God, you know, if people say to people, oh, you're so lucky. Yeah, and and it, you know, like, well, do you know how hard that person worked to be that lucky? Exactly. You know, exactly. That's what it comes down to, really. And you know, I've made mistakes in my life. Of course, I have. Have I learnt from them? Yes, absolutely. Um, but I, do I blame anyone else for my mistakes? No, I don't. Um, have I been in situations where things haven't gone well for me uh, that have been other people's things? Yes. Do I dwell on that? No. Do I get up and say, there we go? Do I openly talk about it and not harbour it? Yes. That's exactly what I do. Nice. Um, because because um, I won't feel shame in someone else's blunder that put me in a situation. Um, you know, things like that. So that that's really how, how I kind of live. And I suppose, yeah, I suppose that is... Uh, Yes, but that is spirituality, isn't it? You know, it you, is. You I think, of, yeah, it the, is definitely the idea of human spirit and soul yeah. over over anything else. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I have to say, I, I agree with you in many ways. I, I, I like the idea of you know spirituality being now in the present moment as opposed to this thing when you die, because you know, like no one knows what happens after that, whereas we well, do no know what's happening no. in the day to day yeah. world. You know. Yeah, and I, I lost my mum when I was young, um, oh. and. Um, uh, I went to school after that, which kind of saved me. And I've I've said this a lot. You know, my year at drama school really saved saved. Me. Um, horrible uh, losing. You know, my mother. Um, Glad to hear that. And yeah, oh, oh, thank you. It's it's um, you know, uh, is she in heaven? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. She no one knows. Uh, yeah. She, it, you know, but is she that there's that thing of is she with me maybe um you know does does something follow and i think for me what follows what what is it that i keep with me and you know i'll have a chat with her and be like you know uh you know what do you think or i hope you feel make me feel proud but i think what you carry is the those memories of what that person would have said when they're alive yeah that makes makes you feel as though they are still with you now which is incredibly important um i think so so definitely, yeah, so um, but that's not to say I don't. I I will never fight anyone that says I absolutely believe that there is evidence. Well, good yeah. as long as it makes you a good person. I honestly don't care. I, I just be nice, you know. Yeah. Just be be nice and 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 truthfully care about someone else and and try and try and help other people as much as you as much as you can, but whilst not hindering your own. Uh, successes and and not forgetting about helping yourself uh, and your close friends and family as well, which I see people do a lot. And you can't help others unless you're unless you are um, 
able to help yourself first. I, I, I believe that. That's not to say that helping others can't help you because what's interesting about where all the CCI and everything came from yeah. was we were asked to do an interview, uh, Jason Broderick on, on The Hustle, and it was the last thing that Rosie and I could ever have imagined wanting to do when we were so low yeah. and you know our life had fallen apart. Yeah, uh, We did it and it made us feel incredible because we felt suddenly like you know, it, we were helping someone, yeah, like other people, and like I don't know, some ten thousand people watched it and and responded to the things we said, and we're like, okay, and that meant that that helped us in, incredibly. So, um, yeah, that's that's kind of where I guess I stand um, on that. I hope a lot of that makes sense. Brilliant. That was uh, the waffle, the no, no. I was going to say, I was going <laughs> to say more, more, more words of wisdom there, Jay. More, more words of wisdom, definitely. I um I want to answer I want to answer one of these questions. We don't have time to answer all of them. Great. Thank you for your questions, listeners. Uh, there've been uh, there's been many, and um I can't obviously answer them all, but I will answer this one. This is from Luisa Quijero. She's a she says she's a um half Portuguese, half English actress, and she uh-huh. says her question is, she said, "What is the most challenging casting request you've ever had?" Uh, <clears throat> to find someone who could sing frozen um defying gravity yeah listen to that those big belt songs yeah be able to dance and play uh cello or violin <laughs> <laughs> and we did it we did it we did yes it. but it was wonderful we love that i mean it's like right okay it really gets the juices flowing um but that was that was, yeah, that, that I think was the toughest, but obviously it's like, great, let's do this. Let us, you know, that is challenge accepted. So, brilliant. Yeah, amazing. brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Well, that must have been fantastic. And it must be so satisfying when you get such a, um, a specific request oh, and you're able to, to fill it. Well, I'll tell, tell you what, that side is humbling to sit in a room and have someone <laughs> do that. That's you just go, ah, oh, you're just ridiculous. This yeah, is, what have I been doing with my life? You know, it's <laughs> like you know, you're insane. Yeah, um, and it is, and that's you know, we we do we do one of the best jobs ever, and that's we get to sit uh, on not you know normal times in rooms and listen to talent perform. You know, that's that obviously is an incredible amount of admin. But uh, to it, but the the icing on the cake is sitting as casting directors in a room, just being like, "Oh God, this is your this is wonderful." You know, whether whether someone's right or wrong, it doesn't matter. They just you just go, "This is to 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 spend our day listening and watching talent." Is yeah, we're so lucky. Yeah, you guys. I mean, I have to say, you you guys are great. You guys are great. I mean, you're. I mean, I I I only know of you guys because of the Collective Creative Initiative, but I'm. As soon as I discovered that, I was uh, blown away by, um, wow. yeah, just by your sense of, uh, as you say, of service, of doing something for somebody else um, and just and supplying that service. And it's, as you say, it is a twofold thing because by doing it, you are actually making yourself feel better. So it's kind of a, you, you're getting the, you're getting the feedback, you know, you're getting the feedback yeah. from people and it's also it's also good for your own mental health as well. So yeah, brilliant. I think they did. They did a a, a big kind of research thing a long time ago, maybe about fifteen years ago. Yeah. Um, and it was about happiness. What 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 defines happiness? And through all these different uh, trials and things, and they you know they tested money, having children, um, family, all these which had moments and created happiness. Uh, happy moments um you get given 100 pounds wow that's amazing you go spend 100 pounds great and that's done yeah. um the 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 only thing that matched up to 100 percent feeling of true happiness was the act of giving and that was that was it and how people felt when they gave um and that's actually the 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 true um the true thing of ha- happiness comes from us giving something but not getting anything back in return i think so that charity. is a yeah um, i think that's a beautiful i think that's a beautiful way to end to end our oh. to end our time <laughs> together james thank you so much for for agreeing to do the interview it's been really interesting talking to you 
thank you for having me. It's been great, really great. And uh, yeah, I mean, we'll we'll be sure to put up all your links and everything. We'll we'll also I'll be talking about them as well after I say goodbye to you now. And uh, yeah, you know, go and check out, go and check out, stay awake, Jake. That's going to be the big yeah. plug. That's going to be on the eighteenth yeah, and the nineteenth. Yeah. Yes, I'll be I'll be plugging it. I'll be plugging it for the next for the next uh, forty minutes as well. Don't worry about oh, that. Wonderful. Thank you. Thanks Thank so you. much, Thank James. You. I'll speak to you soon. Okay. Been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank Take you. Bye bye. Bye. That was James Pearson there of Pearson Casting. What a what a gent. What a gent. What a nice man. And and himself himself and Rosie like what a fantastic initiative that they started. Um, which actually, it actually started on the 1st of June. So the lockdown, as we know, started at the, it started in March, didn't it? Uh, but they didn't actually, they didn't actually win. They won the award uh, in May, and then they only had a, a, a few days really to kind of get it up, to get up the, the website and everything and get everything running from, from the 1st of June. I think uh, James was saying that they had seven days to get it up. Uh, up the website and get the platform up and running for the first two weeks of classes. Really, really incredible stuff. Folks, we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back after these messages. Please join us then for more art and spirituality. Relax Radio Radio advertisement is four times more powerful than any other media. Relax Radio the Judy Advertise Kutajan, Dalama de Gaji Jugajukurun on O two O seven four seven four nine two nine two. Amada Shat Advertise Kurun for on ninety nine pounds a month. Increase your business by advertising on Relax Radio. It has been too long. No one has taken the initiative to know who you are and what you do. Well, Relax proudly presents Relax Media to unite and expose all media-related personalities under one umbrella. If you are an artist or maybe you're looking for one, look no further. Log on to www.relaxmedia.com dot com r e l a k s media dot com in return you get a free web page and exposure to wider fan appreciation and contacts also optional personal manager don't delay relax ready Welcome back to the Art and Spirituality Show. Well, big thank you to my guest for joining me today, James Pearson of Pearson Casting, and one half of the Collective Creative, the Collective Creative Initiative, which just finished running 26 weeks of classes via their YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, they actually were involved in giving classes of practitioners, 200 different practitioners, gave classes over 26 weeks. They had viewers across 34 different countries. And I have the actual stats here so I can get this right. I made some notes so I don't get it wrong. They had uh, 1.4 million minutes viewed. 
and they had uh, they actually invested over forty five thousand pounds into the industry. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Now I'd love to hear from you today. Did you listen? Did you check out any of their classes? Did you attend any of their classes of the uh, Collective Creative Initiative over the last six months? If you did, I'd love to hear from you what classes you attended. You can give me a call. My number is 078-52-473-473. You can, uh, you can send me a message on WhatsApp or you can give me a call. Or you can also send us a tweet. Uh, we're at Relax Radio. And we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear if you got involved in any of the uh, Collective Creative Initiative classes over the last six months. We'd love to hear how you got on. What you got up to? Are you an actor? Are you an actress? Are you someone working in the industry right now? Maybe you're somebody who was, uh, before the Collective Creative Initiative was around, maybe you were at home and you were feeling disconnected, feeling alone, feeling, maybe just feeling a little bit down in the dumps, you know? Uh, and the first lockdown was, was quite a difficult time for everybody, I think. Mental health was a... Uh, it was a it was a it was a really big issue. I mean it's always a big issue, but it was a really big issue, I think, in the first lockdown because nobody was prepared for kind of how difficult and how um isolating it was going to be, you know. So yeah, I'd love to hear from you if you if you were helped by the collective creative initiative. I know I was. I certainly uh when I discovered them. I started taking the classes uh, and I was, you know, it just gave me a lot of structure. It gave me a lot of structure. And, it, you know, it, it really strikes me something interesting that James said in relation to doing something for other people. Uh, just that this feeling of this feeling of happiness that you get from giving this feeling of, of happiness that you get from you know, your time giving a, a service to somebody and not expecting anything in return gives you a sense of happiness so you know if you are looking for something to do this this december maybe a volunteer maybe some sort of volunteering might be something that could cheer you up put you in a good mood um i like to do things i like to do things for people all the time that's how i am um, uh, personally find uh happiness uh by doing things to be of service of people you know whether that's uh you know um making somebody a cup of tea <laughs> or taking uh or, or taking someone's clothes out of the washing machine uh yeah just put, however you can find it however you can find it uh so definitely check out the collective creative initiative i know we have the links in there and please 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 make sure you go out and support uh, this theatre, which is going to be taking place on the 18th and 19th of December of this month. It's called Stay Awake Jake. It's starring Ahmed, uh, uh, Ahmed, Ahmed, and it's written by Tim Gilvin and directed by Grace Taylor. And it's at the Southwark Playhouse, and that's going to be streaming. And uh, yeah, it, they've got there's three different performances that they have on. They're on there on the 18th at 7.45 p.m. And then they're on the 19th at 3.45 p.m. And then they're on again in the evening time at 7.45 p.m. And that's going to be streaming online. And tickets tickets are only £10. So that's super cheap. Super, super cheap, I have to say. Uh, there's, a lots of, there's lots of online theatre happening this month, folks. If you're, uh, I don't know what you're doing. Or if you're planning on staying home, if you're planning on staying in the lockdown, and maybe you're not going to go out and about too much, if you want to check out some live online theater that's happening this month, there is a lot going on. A lot, a lot, a lot. I went onto a couple of websites to do a little bit of research. One website which I found really helpful was a website called whatsonstage.com. Whatsonstage.com. You can check out that website to find out what's happening this month uh, in the theater world. Another website which I found very informative is the website called theaters theateronline.com theateronline.com this is a great website as well and interestingly uh, a project which Pearson Casting were involved in the, the casting for uh, which is Rent James uh, uh, spoke about it briefly uh, pre-recorded a pre-recorded production of Rent from Hope Mill Theatre that is going to be streaming 
from the 7th of December, so from today, up until the 20th of December. And that's going to be streaming. Um, and that's a, it's a rock musical. Sure, you musical, and uh, it's uh, it's Jonathan Larson in there. And by the way, folks, if you want to go on to uh, theatersonline.com and you can book your tickets on there as well. Uh, pretty interesting stuff. Um, yeah, I would definitely recommend checking that out. It's um, uh, yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be running all month. It's going to be running all month. If you're looking for something else that's going on, uh, we've got the, um, uh, if you're maybe you're a Shakespeare fan. Do we have any Shakespeare fans out there? I'm sure we do. If you're a Shakespeare fan, if you want to go and see The Taming of the Shrew, The Taming of the Shrew is going to be at the, the Brixham Theatre. Again, it's online, online streaming, so you can watch it from, from your home. And that's on the 12th of December, and they've got a couple of different showings going on. They've got one in the afternoon and then they've got one in the evening. And uh, yeah, again, you can get your tickets for that at theatresonline.com. So yeah, make sure to check that out. Uh, maybe you're looking for something for the family. If you're looking for uh, a panto, if you're looking for a pantomime online, uh, there's the, the panto online are doing a production of Jack and the Beanstalk. Jack and the Beanstalk. And interestingly... This is actually being made by uh, Peter Duncan. Peter Duncan, the legendary Peter Duncan from uh, Blue Peter. He has a huge back garden and he filmed, he filmed, I guess they must have done it in the summertime because judging by the video, it looks super sunny there. But they filmed a production of Jack and the Beanstalk in his garden. Like This guy's garden is huge. It just goes on and on and on and on. It's a very, very long garden and he has all these different areas in the garden and he has kind of set up like an outdoor outdoor theater space. So as you go further into the garden, you kind of go past these different areas and uh, yeah, that's going to be streaming online. That's actually streaming at the moment. It's streaming this month and it's streaming uh, from this month up to next month. So up to January 2021. Uh, that's uh, Jack and the Beanstalk. Uh, and yeah, Panto Pantomime Online. Good for the family, right? Good for the family. What is happening with everyone who's listening today? Are you guys out and about? Are you back at work? Have you come out of lockdown? It's the 7th of December. I can't believe it. It's the 7th of December today. Where has the year gone? Well, probably we know where it's gone. We've, we've been at home, haven't we? But where has the month gone? We're already seven days into December. Ooh, it's getting cold out there, isn't it? Yeah, oh, wow. It's uh, it's getting very, very cold out there. I think it's like two degrees today, something like that. It's a cold one. It's a really, really cold one. Do you reckon we're going to get snow this year? I think we might get a bit of snow. I think we might get a bit of snow. I think it. I think we might even get a, we might even get a white Christmas. Wouldn't that be amazing if we got a white Christmas, right? How good would that be? Yeah. on uh, the whatsapp there um, or you can uh, you can also send us a tweet at relax radio we'd love to hear from you we'll be back after the short messages please join us then for more art and spirituality relax radio The radio advertisement is four times more powerful than any other media. Relax Radio the Jodi advertise korte chan tale amaderke aje jogajog korun on 02074749292. Amader sathe advertise korun from 99 pounds a month. Increase your business by advertising on Relax Radio.
It has been too long. No one has taken the initiative to know who you are and what you do. Well, Relax proudly presents Relax Media to unite and expose all media-related personalities under one umbrella. If you are an artist or maybe you're looking for one, look no further. Log on to www.relaxmedia.com R-E-L-A-K-S media.com In return, you get a free web page and exposure to wider fan appreciation and contacts. Also, optional personal manager. Don't delay. Relax Radio. The Art and Spirituality Show. Welcome back. I'm Dominic Anglum. Well, uh, lovely guest we had today, James Pearson there from Pearson Casting joined us today. And he was talking all about the collective the collective creative initiative, which he co-founded with his uh, uh, wife and partner, uh, Rosie Pearson. And yeah, they started that in June of this year. And over the last six months, they ran 26 weeks giving 30 hours of free industry training and coaching via their YouTube channel. Now, their YouTube channel is great because it not only has all of the uh, classes that they had on this month, but it also has it also has uh, the Q&As, the Q&As that they had with casting directors. Um, and so they are actually still all up there. Now, something that they were talking about in their final in their final video that they put on to their YouTube channel was a Q&A with one of their patrons. But one of their patrons, of course, Arlene Phillips. This is a brilliant q and I highly recommend you watch it. It's still up on their YouTube channel, so you can go and check that out. And it's a really cool uh, a Q&A um, with Arlene Phillips. For any actors who have just, just qualified, if you've just come out of university and you're looking at getting into the industry, this is uh, the, the Q&A for you. Arlene Phillips, of course, you know, legend in the business, uh, CBE. Uh, she's a, a choreographer, a director, producer, a judge and a presenter. And, you know, she's been involved in uh, productions such as Grease, We Will Rock You, The Wizard of Oz. So, yeah, it's a really good uh, Q&A. Definitely recommend checking that out. And uh, yeah, and they also, you know, they 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 really did. They collaborated with so many uh, interesting people and interesting um, groups over those uh, six months. They had a Broadway takeover, which were what where where they did um they did some classes with with some Broadway folk. They also had um uh, a collaboration with Gradfest, the Gradfest. They collaborated with Industry Minds. They collaborated with singingdemos.co.uk who do vocal and voice reels and they also collaborated with uh, Drink the Ink so yeah definitely check out their their uh, YouTube uh, to catch up on some of those classes and you know um, James we did have that question we had that question from uh, the Israeli uh, actor actress I should say and she was asking how do uh, people make the crossover from theatre acting into screen acting and James was saying that a, a great thing well, one of the most important things that you have to do is to actually uh, make um, a show reel you know and he was saying a great way that you can do that is if you go into these film schools and just you know put yourself up there um, and say hey look I'm, a re- I'm, I'm available I'm ready I'm an actor and I'm available to do some productions you know uh, another person that can actually help with uh, with uh, show reels and stuff like that is um, one of my guests who I had on the show a couple of weeks ago, Fraser Blacksland. He has a, a a company called Mr. Self Tape, and he helps with self tapes. And I know that he also helps with show reels as well. So you can also get in contact with him, Mr. Self Tape. 
he's on Twitter as Mr. Self Tape as well, I believe. Frazier Laxland is his name. It just struck it, it popped into my head when, when James was talking about that. But isn't it interesting how, you know, this whole pandemic happened and, you know, there was instant, instantaneously, instantaneously, is that a word? There was instantly, okay, let's just go with instantly. There was instantly this big, you know, stop in the industry. You know, everyone, like it was felt like right across the board, you know, from actors, from dancers, from musicians, artists, poets, right across the board. People felt it and the ripple effect was huge. And I, I just think it's, it's, it's really interesting to note that when they actually started the Collective Creative Initiative, it kind of it, it kind of changed the wave a little bit. If you imagine like the wave, like going out in an ocean, you know, and it, it was like, oh, everything stopped. But then, you know, they started this initiative. So it was kind of like they created a, a different wave and it was like, it went against that wave and it, they kind of created their own wave of, of positivity, of connection, of service, of people collaborating, people talking, dialogue. And that I think is one of the one of the strongest things to come out of the last six months with the CCI, the uh, the fact that they created this community of people. They got people talking, they got people collaborating, and what they found was there was so many people. There was so many people, uh, especially practitioners who actually donated the money that they received, they donated it back into the project. They donated it back into the project to reinvest into the the collective, you know? And there's so many, I know like there's been so many artist collectives that have come together uh, in the last six months and have been collaborating and creating and making things and supporting projects. And, you know, if you think about the uh, the Cultural Recovery Fund, for example, in the UK, you know, there's that £1.5 billion. Pound. So, you know, if you think about that, think about that money that's out there and you think about all the people who are collaborating and making projects and doing things. You know, there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of positivity out there. There's a lot of positivity out there to go against, you know, uh, the the stop and the pandemic that that's been going on, you know, all this year. I think it's interesting when people do start to collaborate, they change. You know, they change the dialogue. They change the the sense of uh, you know disconnection. And, uh, uh, you know, actors need, they need acting coaches to get parts. Do you know, like it's all connected. Um, and I, I think it's, I think that the pandemic has really started to show us that, you know, we're not, we're not alone. We're not alone. You know, all we have to do is go online, join up with the course, join up with an interactive workshop or go on to these yeah, these YouTube videos that they had and, you know, watch, do a dance class, do something new, get involved, get out there, do some art, and uh, and brighten up your day as a result of that. So, yeah, a uh, big thank you to James for joining us today. Um, and I, uh, I was really, really grateful to have him on the show because I've been talking about the, the uh, collective initiative, the Creative Collective Initiative, for the last um, few weeks. So it was great to get him on the show today. And yeah, I wanted to say, tune in, make sure you tune in on Wednesday. Wednesday, we're going to be, uh, I'm going to be joined by a uh, yeah, British comedian, journalist, and comic book author, uh, Joshua Saxon. He's going to be joining me via phone. He's based over in Madrid in Spain, and he's going to be joining me via phone. We're going to be talking all about his new comic book, uh, Milky, it's called Milky, 
and that's uh, that's we're going to be talking all about that on Wednesday. That's going to be a Wednesday at, at 2 p.m., 2 p.m. to 4 p.m., back to our old time again, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. So make sure you, you tune in for that. I also wanted to mention that we do uh, we had it we had a guest on the show. She was on the show. Oh, when was she on the show? She was on the show in March, not March, in, in October. Anna Masota. Anna Masota was on the show uh, in October. Well, Anna Masota has now got an exhibition open at the uh, the Baker Howard Gallery in Greek Street. Um, and I hope Harry has got the, the link for, the, for me for that. <laughs> I hope he does. I hope he does. That's on at the moment. That's on. Uh, it's on from from now until the 13th of December, I believe. So make sure you go and check that out. Uh, on in Poet Baker Harry, and that's on. Uh, it's on from now until the 13th. Anna uh, and culture. Um, yeah, let me see if I if I got the information right there. I hope I did, but you know me, I. I I say these things, and then have I have I said the right thing or not? Hopefully, I have. Let's see if I can if I can get the information here. The Baker Howard Contemporary, Baker Howard Contemporary. It's fifty nine Greek, fifty nine Greek Street. So yeah, make sure you go and check that out. That's going to be in person. You can go and actually see her um, award. You can go and actually see her uh, in person. And yeah, I mean, uh, productions, but you know, they, you know, they, they've been around, they've been in the business. Imagine they've been in the business for 25 years, 25 years. They've been in the business. So, um, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a long, long time. Sorry. I thought we were getting a, a tweet there. That's why I had to look at that and um, look at that screen for a moment. But, um, yeah, they've been in the business for such a long time. And you know the the wealth the wealth of knowledge and connections that they have is um, is quite incredible, and let's not forget you know let's not forget that they were uh, the the casting directors on Six the musical, you know let's not forget about Six the musical, you know Six the musical of course, I mean that, how can we how can we even we can't even touch on how successful Six the musical has been right. Uh, you know, nominated for five Oliver Awards in 2019. Uh, you know, BBC Radio 2 Audience Award for Best Musical 2020. And that, of course, uh, is directed by uh, Lucy Miss and Jamie Armitage. And yeah, so that's, you know, that's that, that was just one of the projects that they were involved in. They also were involved in casting for Rent, which I was talking about before, which is uh, streaming from a pre recorded show. Is uh, streaming um, uh, from Hope Mill Theatre that was uh, streamed back in Manchester. Uh, they're also, we didn't talk about this, but they're also involved in the casting for another production called Forever Played, and that's upstairs at the Gatehouse. Uh, and that's uh, that's London, that's on London this year and next year. So you have to, uh, you have to keep an eye, you have to keep an eye out. Make sure you follow them, follow them on Twitter. Make sure you follow them on Twitter, Pearson Casting, follow them on Twitter. And that way you'll be able to keep up with all of the different projects that they're doing. So, yeah, it's been a, a great show today. Uh, there's so much going on out there. I hope you guys are keeping well. I hope you're keeping safe. Um, uh, we've, thanks so much to our questions that we had through. Thanks so much to our questions uh, from our... We had uh, two, two, two questions that I managed to answer. We did have some other questions that came through, but I just did... I'm sorry I didn't get to answer all the questions. We only had an hour with James and I wanted to make sure that we covered everything that he was involved in uh, first and foremost before we went into uh, the proper question question time uh, but yeah thanks to the, thanks to the people who tuned in and uh, yeah we'll be back again on, on Wednesday for more art and spirituality um, I'm Dominic Anglum and uh, yeah it's been a great show it's been a great show hope you're keeping well out there hope you're staying safe staying healthy Remember to wash your hands, socially distance, and uh, yeah, keep a keep keep a smile on your face, right? Because it's it's not all bad. Find something that you can do for somebody else. Find a way that you can be of service to somebody else. That's my big takeaway from this show today. 
find somebody, find something that you can do for somebody else and you will find some happiness there. You will get some happiness out of that. And it will also, you'll also be helping somebody else out. So, you know, win-win situation. Make sure you're practicing compassion. Make sure you're practicing compassion towards yourself. Make sure you're practicing compassion towards other people. Uh, compassion, kindness, and love uh, in this uh, December 2020. The end, the end of the end of what has been, let's face it, folks, quite a quite an unusual year, right? This is this, this is year this year is definitely going down in history as uh, as one of the most bizarre years, I think, in the world. This will go down. This will be in the history books. This one will be in the history books as going down as one of the most bizarre years. But it hasn't all been bad. You know, there's a lot of good things that have happened this year and uh, uh, for myself, f- for lots of other people that I know as well. And if you have been involved in any creative projects this year, let me know about them. Let me know about some creative projects that you've been up to this year. Maybe I can even get you on the show as a guest. Maybe you'd like to be a guest on the show in the future. If you would like to be a guest on the show in the future, send us a tweet or a comment on this video. And I'll be sure to, uh, to, to get back to you at some point. It won't be in the live show because, uh, you know, we're, we're just a small crew here. But it will be after the live show and I will definitely get back to you. We're fully, we're fully booked up for interviews for the, for the rest of this month. But uh, we do have some availability next month. So, yeah, you can, uh, you can get in contact with us. And, uh, yeah, we'd love to have you on the show. You know, this is the art and spirituality show. I'm interviewing artists. And then I'm talking about a little bit about spirituality, about what spirituality means to the particular artists that I'm talking to and what spirituality means to me. And I think, I think, you know, I think James summed it up pretty well when he said, you know, spirituality for him is very much in the day to day. You know, it's in the day to day. If he reaches out, he can touch some grass. If he punches someone in the face, chances are they're going to punch them back. And I think that's a, I think that can also be applied to, you know, if you if you put out good vibes, if you're doing, you know, they were doing all of these free classes, you know, 30 hours, imagine 30 hours a week, free industry classes. They did that for six months. So, yeah, equally, if you put out, you know, you get you get back what you put out. Right. And uh, they were putting out some seriously good vibes, good energy into the industry at a time when the industry had come to a stop. You know, not just not just for the actors, not just for the performers, but also for the casting directors. They were, you know, they, they didn't have any work either. So they were in the same boat in a way. So to, to be able to get that, to be able to get that award from Innovate uh, UK, to be able to win that award. And then imagine they took uh, £45,000, over, over £45,000, and they put that back into the industry. There's something, you know, there's something pretty special about that, I think. Talk about uh, putting out some good vibes. Talk about some put, putting out some good vibes. And yeah, so yeah. Oh, and I meant to mention, before I go, I meant to mention, if you want to uh, see some other online theater this month, you can also check out uh, uh, on, uh, Original Theater Group. have got a, a show, and that's uh, called Apollo 13, The Dark Side of the Moon. That's running from the 7th until, to, until the 31st of December. And that stars uh, Tom Chambers. He's from Father Brown. Uh, Christopher Harper from Carnation Street. Uh, so that's yeah, that's yeah, Apollo 13, Dark Side of the Moon, 7th to the 31st. Uh, and then another show which is on is uh, A Christmas Carol. And that's by Front Room Productions, Lawrence Batley Theatre. And that's from the 7th until the 31st as well. And by the way, if you want to get tickets for these, you can get them at theatres online.com i almost didn't mention that okay i think i've answered everything i'm supposed to be answering good check 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 takes all my boxes good well this has been the art and spirituality show i've been uh, dominic anglum i still am dominic anglum but i've also was him for the time that i was here and yeah thanks for joining us today and i uh, hope you can tune in on wednesday for for more art and spirituality join me on wednesday 2 p.m I'll be there with uh, Joshua Saxon, uh, author of Milky the Comic. Please join me then for more art and spirituality. Cheers.
আমাদের সাথে 